With the approaching storm may seem kind of destructive to us, but to nature, it's a new beginning in the cycle of life. systems is the rainforest, home to the most amazing concentration of life on our planet. These dense and beautiful forests cover only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Rainforests are also extremely rich in productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicines, and other elements essential to our lives. In the desert, nature has created a very different, but no less beautiful, living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. The American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert. But over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. Of all the forces at work on the land, humans have had one of the most profound effects. The need to produce food for a growing world led to the enormous use, and sometimes overuse, of the land. In our search for more efficient ways to grow food, we often fail to realize the impact of our methods. Environmental well being. Here at Epcot, we're learning to reduce the need for chemical pesticides by breeding and using natural predators like ladybugs and wasps to control pests. In the farmlands across America, we're learning that by plowing under vegetation containing natural fertilizers, we can enrich the soil without the use of chemicals. In arid regions, we're learning to produce food on desert seacoasts by developing and planting crops that thrive on soil. How 
will we meet tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land? Some of the answers are being discovered just ahead. To help us maintain these carefully controlled ecosystems, and for your safety, please remain seated in your boat at all times. Laboratory, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee, and rice, are well known around the world. These are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition for people living in the tropics. Many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. One day, many of these lesser-known tropical plants may be as important as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. How did that happen? Did they make it grow like that? Um, yeah, they put it like in a little place. Why is the cacao not growing? I didn't go to a cacao farm. We went to a cacao farm last time. When we mention farming, you probably don't think of fish. But fish farming, or aquaculture, accounts for nearly half of all the seafood consumed globally. Tilapia, bass, and catfish, like the ones you see here, are three of the more popular crops raised by fish farmers. The sustainable system we're using here resembles the water in the tanks. As a result, we're able to save millions of gallons each year. Our small fish farm produces nearly 5,000 pounds of fish each year to serve in restaurants and Walt Disney World. Innovations like this one can play an important role in our efforts to produce bountiful harvests and still protect natural resources. Oh wait, there's a big one. While there are more than 50,000 edible plant species in the world, most of us are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here, wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Learning how to increase yields of these staples is an important goal of research around the world. Carolina Reaper. Yeah. That's a, yeah. These plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like these increase yields while more efficiently using.